Hi everyone! It's Nona Grace and I'm from Western New York. Yesterday I forgot to say that because we were messing with the camera. I had thought it looked crooked and it was crooked, but today it's set up just like it should be, I believe. And I asked Jim to sit down because I said when I talk to you, I'd like you to be more eye, eye level than high above me. He is taller than me, which is nice. <laughs> That was one of the things that I was, when I was going to, when I was, well, thinking of getting married or looking for anybody that I might marry. They had to have three criterias. He only met one. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I gave up a little bit or gave in or something. I don't know. No, I actually got the better of the deal, even though he can't sing or dance. Those were the two things that he, I was really, really, really looking forward to. But he's tall, dark, and handsome. That was, that was good. So he met one of the criterias. Um, before I go too far, I want to talk to Bob. So don't go away, everybody else. I'm still here to talk to you, too, because I want to tell you about my chickens. But this message is for Bob. Now, Bob had um, liver surgery, and he's in the hospital. He's doing way better than, than I thought he was going to do. To be honest, he's doing great, actually. No, I don't want to say that, do no. I? Oh, dear Bob, I'm sorry. No. You're doing way good, real good. No. Surprisingly good, <laughs> shall I put it that way? Um, he, he and I talked today on the phone, which I was really surprised. I did put you on speakerphone, Bob. I don't know if you noticed that or not, but I did. I have a new phone, so I can put you on speakerphone. So Jim got to hear what you said, too. And so this way I shared, and, and this way when you said, tell him hi, I still told him, he said hi. <laughs> <laughs> and he had heard it, but I told him anyways. Hi, Bob. <laughs> He's, he, I, do you notice? He made me some bookcases, and these bookcases are this, actually my library now. It's made out of wood that we got for free. It's, it's um, oak wood. Mm -hmm. and reclaimed lumber. Reclaimed lumber is what they would call it. Now, we got it free from McDonald's. When McDonald's, the old store was being torn down, I really wish I could have got their thermal pane windows. That would have been a beautiful greenhouse. But trying to get them and take them home would have been a real challenge. I need one of those trucks that carries glass. I don't have one of those. But we did take a lot of their um, shrubbery home, their bushes and things. I was talking to Bob, wasn't I? Oh, yep. dear Bob, I'm sorry I got off track. <laughs> you, you know, you're doing so good. And I want everybody else to know that who kept you in their thoughts and prayers that he is doing good. Yes, you are. Still needs their thoughts and prayers. Still needs thoughts and prayers. Yes, he does. Just like all of us do, but he needs them more than I think the rest of us. Only because he's still healing. It's taken a while to heal. I get so flabbergasted when these things... I would say so much more if you were right here, and I it would come more natural. This is kind of forced feeling, because I'm trying to think, what would I say to you? I'm just so happy that you called me. That was, that was it really, really, really made my day. Um, I'm going to show you a little clips. This is for the rest of you that are still here. Are you eavesdropping? Yes, they are, but I told you to <laughs> stick around, because I was going to talk to you. I'm going to show you the chicks today, the chickens and the chicks. I was really, really surprised when I opened the gate up because I had uh, Dorothy and her babies were separated from the rest of the flock because they have to get to know each other and they have to be safe when they're getting to know each other. So I had a barrier between them. And today I thought I would try opening up the gate and see what happens. So I opened it up and the other chickens went in to kind of investigate. They were, they're all very curious. And so they were looking around. And every time they would get, oh, excuse me. Every time they'd get near um, Dorothy and her babies, she would kind of puff up a little bit. But nobody bothered her. Well, then later she came on out of the little area that she was in. And she actually was outside. And two of the birds... Two of the hens was going to sassy her or make, try to bully her, I guess is what they would say. 
and the, she shooed one of them away. Then this other one was getting really naughty, and I saw the rooster run over. I wish I would have caught this on film because it was the best thing ever. They say roosters are supposed to keep peace in the hen house. Well, this rooster is apparently doing his job because as soon as he got over there, he, sh he got between the two girls and he made the one that was bothering Dorothy to leave her alone and he actually gave her a little nick on the head. Like, don't you bother her. Can't you tell she's got babies and she's taking care of her babies. Then a little later on, he was she was digging and digging and digging and trying to, I think she was trying to get her babies out from underneath the enclosed area, which she would never be able to do because I put, I buried the fence. Well, Jim buried the fence. <laughs> yes. He buried the fence so she could never dig it far enough to really get her babies out. So the rooster actually tried to get her to go back to the door to say, you have to go to the door and show your children that there's the door to get out. They can't come through the wall. They're not going to be able, you can't dig a hole to get them out. And then he left her alone. And then eventually the babies did come out. And I've got a little bit of video showing you with her with them outside. Gradually she was walking them closer and closer to the grass. But she still was kicking around in the wood chips and the, and the dirt there. And she would peck and cluck. And the little chickies would all hang right with her. And pay very close attention. You know, chicks are apparently very well behaved little children for the hens. <laughs> Too bad our children aren't they? Can you imagine having seven babies all the same age and they all listen to you when you talk? That that would be a miracle. But um, I also had to get Silver Fox and her babies in several times. But you know she's she's um, getting to the point where she sees me come out. She comes walking to the gate and she goes in. And Brownie was out a few times. Brownie fly, can fly too. Those two are the two that can fly. The rooster can fly, but he hasn't been flying lately. He just stays in the coop. He only flies when he gets really scared. And the only one that scares him is Jim. And, of course, my daughter too when she was here. But he didn't get frightened enough to fly out of the enclosed area. I guess I am done talking. Oh, and this is for Liddy. Leedy. Leedy. Excuse me, I said it wrong. It's it's L I E D Y. But it's said Leedy. Hello, Leedy. <laughs> <laughs> she made a comment on her video today about it's hard making a video every day. It is hard making a video every day. Sometimes I wonder what are, what in the world am I going to talk about? And then there's days that I have stuff that I want to say so much and I just can't get it all in. There are days that I was thinking that when when it gets to the point where I can't make comments on all the comments because today it took me a long time. I had company and so my daughter came and the grandkids were here and we moved a desk. Oh gosh, see I got more stuff to tell you. This is sad. <laughs> if we were visiting I could tell you it all. Well we are visiting. <laughs> Um, yep. But we had a desk that I wanted moved out of my other room so that I could put a few things that were in this room over there. And it it was a real fiasco. We pulled the drawers out and we had to call Jim to help us because we girls couldn't lift it all the way ourselves. Although we did do pretty good mm -hmm. once we got it out. And... Um, Pagey, she was doing her coloring. She says that she wanted to color. And I says, if you go into the library, which they think is the neatest sound. <laughs> and they go, what? And I says, my library. Go in the library and in the left-hand corner on the lower shelf, there's some coloring books and there's pencils and things there. And there's there's gel pens. I don't know if the gel pens work or not, but they, they are there. And so she found a book that she wanted and she sat at the desk that we had just moved and she was coloring. So... It was working out really good. Well, that is it. And and Liddy, it is hard. I guarantee you. It's not easy. But once you get going, you find it hard to stop. And Bob, you take it easy. I hope you're resting now. I was afraid he'd fall asleep in the middle of my video, so that's why I wanted to put it first. But if you're still there, sleep well tonight, and I'll talk to you all again tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>
pretty boy. You're sure noisy. I opened the little gate to try to let the mama decide if she wants to bring her babies out. Everybody was in there, and they were all leaving her alone. She was fluffing her feathers, but she's working her way slowly this way. She's got seven little ones to watch. That's a lot of babies. The hen house can get pretty noisy. Good to me. Very busy. Hi, Dorothy. It's Dorothy and her babies. There's seven babies. Silver Fox is out and about again somewhere. Okay, I'll leave you guys. Let's see, where's Silver Fox? I'm totally surprised. Silver Fox is sitting on the perch. With her baby. She's not out and about. There you are, girls. There's everybody's everybody's happy in the hen house. This is great. And the babies are underneath her. Can you believe that? Sitting on the roost. And you're coming. You're, you're digging up that ground. Maybe come out further. Getting closer and closer to the door. <laughs> oh, you're so noisy. My rooster likes to stand on one leg a lot of times. Right now she's, oh, there goes one leg. Again. Stands on one leg a lot. <clears throat> it's happy in the hen house. Well, everybody's doing fine. Hello there, Dorothy. Yes, pretty boy had intervened. They're doing good. And these girls are over here. They're just hanging out. And one's in the nesting box. And Jim's on the other side of the house. <laughs> Nothing like showing. Oh, Silver Fox is still up there. Wow. Silver Fox, you're being a good girl today. My goodness, you got your little outing this morning and your babies are on the roost too, all by themselves. Can you see them? I can see them. If I get too close, she'll fly away and they'll jump down. I see the one that's got his head stretched. I think he's a rooster. Oh yes, he's got the redness going on and the, under the mouth area, it's red. You're gonna be a a rooster, a cockerel, as they call them. And you've got, I hope all of your babies are little hens. Let's not put any roosters in this batch, please. Say hello, baby. Pretty boy is looking prettier every day. You've got a beautiful tail there, pretty boy. Well, hello. Oh, look at all the eggs somebody was sitting on. I'm going to take them out. Got some pretty colors there. Mama's out with her babies. Look at you. You are so cute. Look at you all scratching. Oh, she fluffs her tail for us. There's all seven of them. They're doing so good. Um, don't get too close. She'll she'll chase you. You're alright. Just stay put. There's Silver Fox. Rosie doesn't have any red on her, but Annie, I have a feeling you're an Andrew. Yes, you're an Andrew. I have that feeling. And usually I'm not wrong. Well, enjoy life while you can because you know yours is numbered, I'm sorry to say. Rosie, you get to live a long life. You're lucky to be a girl. Listen to all the little peepees.